Welcome, uh, this is Herman Asterik and uh, this is the presentation on deconstructed packs and there's going to be a panel of speakers today. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for everyone for joining us. And the panel consists of myself, my name is Herman, <coughs> Herman Asterik. I've <coughs> been in the industry for quite a while, I'm a trainer consultant specializing in DICOM packs HL7, IHC. And we have had this um, I'm very fortunate to have Michael and Michael to, to make time, to spend time with us. Michael Ryan is, um, <clears throat> uh, went through a uh, quite intensive um, deconstructed packs installation recently, so he's going to share with us uh, a little bit about uh, his specific implementation. And then last but not least, uh, Mike Canavo, the ultimate packs man, he's going to uh, talk a little bit from his experience about what are the do's and don'ts about deconstructed packs. Um, a little bit maybe about why this uh, particular webcast. Um, <clears throat> recently there was a meeting, a SIM meeting in Portland, and I found out that uh, the, I think a lot of people were confused about what is deconstructed packs all about. And I also thought that uh, it was not really given due diligence. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I even thought it was kind of talked down by several of the major PAX vendors. And I, I, so I think that, that this subject uh, deserves, uh, you know, a, a really good discussion about um, deconstructed packs to what and how and, and some of the benefits. Um, so let's get started and um, let me tell you that uh, I have a list of emails from everyone so after this presentation is over I'll share the slides with you and email you to you and uh, <clears throat> also have the intention to uh, to record it and uh, put it on YouTube. So first of all um, my start comment so technology there's a technology curve that talks about um, for every technology where are we in the um, uh, in the curve and and if you look at the curve itself it, it talks about the uh, what we call peak of inflated expectations, uh, the trough of disillusionment and slope of enlightenment and the plateau of productivity. So in my opinion, and it's my personal opinion of course, the deconstructed pack is kind of right here. Everybody is really excited about it, let's do it, but um, I think <clears throat> so we're all going up to this um, to this peak and I think before no longer we might find out maybe it's working and maybe it's not quite working as we expect. So that's one of the things that I hope to do is make sure that we don't have uh, expectations that cannot necessarily be met. So let me explain a little bit <clears throat> about what I think and uh, deconstruction packs is all about. So I'm going to spend probably 10 minutes doing that and then um, <clears throat> Mike um, We'll get an opportunity to talk about his implementations and then before we talk to uh, the Paxman about the do's and don'ts. So let me explain a little bit from my perspective what I, in my opinion, a deconstructed pack system is all about. And uh, when we talk about a deconstructed pack system, um, we're really focusing on what we call the pack score. Now what is the pack score? So this is a typical uh, pack system. So images are sent from modalities uh, to a pack system and there will be an input queue where uh, technologies might verify a study to be added <coughs> to, um, the index will be added to the database and then the images will be uh, uh, stored on the archive. And then there will be also a workflow manager and a workflow manager is really the interface between the pack system and the workstations because what happens is that, um, for example, if a radiologist looks at their workstation uh, for a particular study to be read, it is presented by uh, to the radiologist using a work list and that is coordinated or synchronized with all the other radiologists looking at another workstation uh, with uh, making sure that people don't do double leads and things like that. So we have a uh, basically input queue, uh, database, um, archive and then a web pro manager. So now with regard to deconstructing, uh, one of the first um, deconstructed examples would be um, deconstructing and taking out the workflow manager. And why do we want to do that? Well, um, you might be familiar with some radiologist groups that, that read for different institutions. And particularly here, I live in Dallas, there's a large radiology group and I think they probably uh, cover half of the metroplex and so there's probably like 20 or 30 different hospitals that they read for. And uh, so they have a uh, workstation and on the workstation they, they don't want to necessarily uh, 
log into a work list for for labs from one uh, pack system from one hospital and then maybe McKesson for another one and then Fuji is big in the metroplex as well so <clears throat> all these multiple uh, synchronizing this multiple um, workflow managers can actually be done by the universal work list provider so that's probably one of the early examples of of deconstructing your packs and it became um, a necessity because the uh, a lot of radiologists read for multiple institutions so the workflow manager will be extracted from the packs and they would then communicate with the pack system so that's the first small example of a uh, deconstructing um, another example is where you probably uh, very familiar with it, at least uh, in many cases, because 50% of the hospitals apparently in the United States are looking for vendor neutral archive implementation. So a VNA, what is a VNA? A vendor neutral archive is where the we have another um, copy, another instance of the database, um, and we have another instance of uh, the images on the archive. And so the idea would be to store, to use the packs almost like a cache, and basically store maybe three to six months of images, but have a copy of the uh, image in the vendor neutral archive, and the vendor neutral archive would then uh, also be able to serve as a as a uh, enterprise archiving solution and many, many other things. It might even uh, support XDS, so we can store non-DICOM images if you so desire using the XDS metadata, will be a, potentially have a registry and it can talk to the external world. But in any case, so um, that would be another example of a deconstructing the PAC system by using a vendor neutral archive. Now, one of the challenges is, or one of the, you have to pick out the workflow. And so, uh, for example, do we send the images first to the VNA and then to the archive? Do we send the images first to the to the packs and then to the VNA? So, synchronizing the uh, pack system, actually synchronizing multiple pack systems with the VNA, has become an issue. It's been addressed by IHC by a what we call IOCM profile, but um, and that's that, that's uh, beside the fact. But basically, another way of of uh, deconstructing will be uh, having access um, uh, to the images, and now you can actually have a, a uni viewer, a universal viewer that could also either access the VNA or the packs, depending on again on the workflow. So there's a couple of questions, challenges. You have to really find out what's the workflow. So that's um, work, work, the workflow manager will be a reconstruction, the VNA will be another reconstruction, and you can actually go a step further and you can also take out of the equation all the workstations itself. So what now if I take the uh, viewer, the uh, radiology viewer, the diagnostic viewer, and, and um, also um, use a different vendor for the viewer, and that in that case you could actually point it back to the packs or to the VNA. Um, then the next step would be okay. What about my uh, workstation for my physicians? I can take it out. So by now we already have uh, broken down the packs in, in multiple components, and uh, actually one, two, three, four, five components. So we're down the path of deconstructing it. Now you can even actually go further, and, and um, so um, how far you can go uh, depends on really how. Uh, uh, what, what is it that you want to, to accomplish, but uh, I, I, I got a list here of all the different core features that potentially could be uh, deconstructed of the, uh, from, as part of the PAX deconstruction process. Uh, for example, I can have a prefetch routing engine uh, separately from the PAX from a different vendor. I can have my image QC workstations from a different vendor. Um, my reading work list uh, could be um, for example, provided by a RIS or by a universal uh, workless provider. Uh, my diagnostic display could be from a different vendor, physician display, of course. And a lot of other 3D and plugins could be provided um, as well as part of the deconstructed packs. Then the whole archiving can be taken out, including the hierarchical storage management, the image database as well. And then lifecycle management could also a separate component. Very important, we need to make sure we take care of the audit trails, uh, security privacy. You can have a separate audit trail uh, manager or uh, registration system. Uh, system administration could be separate and then load balancing and disaster recovery, high availability and business continuity. So all of these components could potentially be deconstructed. Now these are the core functions of the PAC system. There's another um, a lot of other features that are not necessarily um, um, considered maybe a core feature, but could also 
be provided as part of the packs or outside the packs being deconstructed. So there could be order processing, or we could have a broker, modality workers provider broker that is separate. Um, and as a matter of fact, we'll see that in uh, the example that we're going to talk with, uh, uh, with Michael in a few minutes. A dictation uh, could be separate. If you don't like your speech recognition provided by the PAC vendor, you can take it out. Report storage, where do we do that? In a his, his, bear, in some gateways. Uh, image sharing could be done in the cloud by a cloud service provider, or uh, you can use the VNA for that. And then clinical results, clinical trials, and discrepancy reporting and teaching files also could also be done externally. Peer review could be an external, and then those and contrast management, very important as well. So, uh, in conclusion, um, the definition of a deconstructed packs is really not consistent. Some um, people say, well, if you take out the workflow manager or you take out a VNA, you have a deconstructed pack. So I think there are many, many different variations of that. And basically, it's a, a best of breed solution by taking out parts and pieces of the pack system and, and go with another vendor. So it can include multiple components. But remember, a pack is still a pack. So you really want to do the same thing, picture, archiving, and communication system. Um, so whether you deconstruct it or reconstruct it's still relatively immature. Uh, there's no question that you know there's not a lot of implementations. I think I saw some statistics, maybe between two and five percent of the hospitals are working on it, and I'm sure that Mike and I can probably comment a little bit more on that. And and I would kind of leave it like consider deconstruction, even if it's a little bit. So if you are, don't like your voice recognition system, no, maybe go with another vendor. If you don't leave, want your, if your modality worklist provider is not uh, up to snuff and you cannot really filter out the worklist um, as you need it, consider another one. Uh, if your modality worklist, so your workstation worklist is not, so <clears throat> not not doing what you need, try to to consider you know deconstructing it. So Thank <laughs> you.